Okay guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to use IstaP. Now as you guys are already aware, I've already done the how to use IstaD and Ista Plus, how to use Impa, how to use WinKFP, how to use NCS Expert. So now I'm going to be showing you how to use IstaP the proper way and how to program and code separate modules individually on IstaP. Now, this can be done. A lot of people don't know how to do it. A lot of you don't know how to get out of the problem when you've got certain modules in there, when you code them. I'm gonna show you how you get out of that problem. Um, obviously, we're gonna be using my E60. Obviously, my E60 don't have any modules down, but I'm just gonna be showing you anyway. We're not gonna be programming my car. I'm just gonna be showing you how to use this to be and what option functions it gives you and how to use them functions properly to be successful in programming your car. Okay, guys, so now we're back and now I'm just gonna be showing you so the first thing you're going to want to be doing is loading up ISTAP. So you're going to want to go to your ISTAP loader. And as you're going to see here, I'm going to have the different loader, which is for the ICOM. I'm not going to have the one with the DCAN cable or the ENET cable where I've got to have use a service host to connect my DCAN cable to fool it into thinking I've got an ICOM because I've actually got an ICOM. So I'm just going to click on cars because that's what we're programming. We're not programming any of the Rolls Royce Mini, any of the i-series bikes. We're going to be programming BMW cars. And then when you click that, what you're gonna do is wait and it's gonna load up on the system. Now, as you can see there, there's it's the P. Now that's the loader. That's what it does when it's loading. Just be patient because it does do that. But when it does do that, all you have to do is just wait and it should load up. Now when it loads up, you're gonna end up going to create a new session. But before we're gonna do that, we're gonna be plugging in the icon. I need to plug in the icon and then need to connect it to the car. Obviously, um, I do have a voltage stabilizer. But we're not going to be using that because I have no need to because I'm not going to be programming the car. But I have to pull it on just to make sure the voltage stays constant. And obviously, as you guys know, it stays stable just for even using this to pee because this to pee doesn't like it fluctuating and will kick you out of the system. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is you're going to see this to pee load. It's going to ask me to create a new session, which I'm going to go ahead and do. And I'm going to get the icon connected to the car and then we're going to run this to pee. And you're going to see all the functions it can do and what it won't do. So as you'll see there, guys, you've got all the sessions that pop up now. You've got session overview. Session overview is when you've finished a session or it's kicked you out of session and it shows you what if there's programming, how long's left and the remaining programming time. Same for create a new session. That's what we're gonna go to. We're gonna create a new session and we're gonna select the server automatically as it comes up. And it'll bring up everything. Programming is all the things that are gonna be, be able to be programmed once the vehicles come up. Vehicle is what the vehicle's fitted with, what vehicle it is, and the vehicle order, what it's fitted with. Maintenance just shows all the maintenance. Data management is all for really nothing. It doesn't help you at all. So all we need to focus on is programming in the vehicle itself. That's the VO and that's the program and that's the vehicle make model and everything's factory fitted with. As you can see, Danny, you've got a warning available, action necessary, being prepared, cannot be used. Now, warning is if something's completely wrong with the module, available or warning sometimes can actually be as well if their battery's going low or anything like that or something's flagging up. Available means that the modules are available to be programmed. Action necessary usually means if a program a module's out and it wants you to change it, it will ask you that the action is going to be necessary. Being prepared means the module is going to be in prepared state. It's being prepared for programming and coding, and cannot be used means it won't be able to be used for programming or coding. That's the simple basics of ISTP. As you can see, it's on expert mode. Now, when you do set this up, you want to enable it for expert mode. As many of you guys are aware who I've done the software for, I always enable you in expert mode, and you're going to find out why expert mode is good for this and why you actually need expert mode when using ISTP. So, guys, we're back, and now I've just connected the icon to the car, and I'm just showing you this is a voltage stabilizer. This one has been custom made from unused materials to make a voltage stabilizer. Um, I got these from a guy that I know. Um, I got one for Nathan also, who I'm going to be sending it over to. This is what we're going to be using to use ISTAP. Now this is a proper voltage stabiliser and not um, a battery charger as most US people seem to think you need for these cars. You do not need um, a battery charger, you need a voltage stabiliser. Trust me on that. Uh, me and Nathan, both when we were programming his car with a battery charger, even he saw how much the power fluctuates. He had to keep switching backwards and forwards and it just couldn't control the the fuel pump keep coming on and off, it drains the battery, especially the interior lights, the auto lights. My best advice, make sure they're all off because they do go on when programming and you've got no control over it. It's to P controls the whole car when it's programming and recoding. My best advice is get one of these. Obviously, you guys in the US won't be able to get them that cheap. This is £100, which works up to about $130. It's not much, but these things do work great. And the guy built it, and uh, you know what? I can't thank him high enough. He's subscribed to me, and he knows who he is. And obviously, this um, punches out what's needed for the programming on the cars. Enough voltage, and it stays pop perfect. Obviously, you just guys need to make sure you get one of these. Obviously, I'm not going to put a link up because the guy don't have many left. Um, I don't think he's making them anymore. He said he'll let me know if he does make any more. 
but I got I got the last two which were for me and Nathan obviously and I'm gonna be sending Nathan over one as well but as you can see here it's been custom made all the tape around it here but the fans come on at the back there which controls the temperature of it this is a proper voltage stabilizer that's needed and as I'm telling you guys don't try and use anything else yes coding and programming is expensive but if you're gonna do it do it right don't do it cheap and then risking destroying your car you also see here that I've got the icon lead running all down the floor and as you can see here the lead is quite big and the icon box is sitting on the car right there I don't know if you guys can see because it's quite dark it's sitting on the window as you guys know I use the icon box the voltage stabiliser sitting right there we've got everything plugged up and then what we're going to do now is we're going to load up Mr. P and I'm going to start creating a session so what we're going to do is create a session and now we're going to select Mr. P server automatically now as I told you guys I'm not going to be no, doing no programming as I don't have to this car doesn't need programming it doesn't need nothing I'm just doing this for to run a test for you guys to show you how to use it so that's what we're gonna do. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back once it reconnects and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So as you'll see guys, we've got the voltage stabilizer on and go in as you can hear by the fans. It's the P's now doing its thing and it's asking me if control modules were replaced. Prevent transmission of, pro transmission of the process log. So we're just gonna do, no, we're not doing nothing to do with the transmission. So as you can see there, that's all running. Voltage stabilizer's all hooked up. As you can see right there, the fans going as well on the voltage stabilizer as you can see everything's all plugged up this is a voltage stabilizer for you and as you'll see the voltage is sitting way above 13 volts that's what it's meant to do it keeps the voltage up so for programming and as you can see it's fully working no issues whatsoever and this is what i was meaning guys a battery charger cannot maintain the voltage battery charger can only charge the battery but once it drops it can't bring it back up in time and it's the people kick you out of the session this is why i say to you all the time you need a voltage stabilizer do not try and use a battery charger as you can see this one's doing its job it's charging everything and they're keeping it stable and as you see here the voltage don't drop if you just look there you can see it there it's keeping it above 13 volts which is where it meant to be but it's not going too high if it goes on 14 volts it will then set the voltage is too high and then kick it out as well so that's what i mean with this the p you can't go too high or too low as you'll see here this is all the vo all the vehicle order the don't verified vic, vic fitted control modules that it's having here as you'll see there all the vins there the mileage everything on the car is all coming up on the screen right there in front of you so this is how you know guys how to use this to pee but as i said you must 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 use a voltage stabilizer it's not a joke when i tell you guys this all the time um a battery charger cannot keep it at that voltage as you see in there and it keeps it stable you need to have it and as you're seeing now everything's working correctly it's all working perfect and now what we're going to do guys is just wait for this to kick up the voltage stable is still going as you see i've got it on the positive and the negative as i said to you guys these have been custom built this is not something that um you can buy as you guys know they're about 500 dollars your country about 350 pound here they are expensive this guy i found builds them very good guy as i told you they're in another country they're um these guys in them countries do a lot of programming and coding as well in the other countries so they understand this stuff as well they find they finally someone it took a long time for someone to actually finally invent one and make them work after all this time where they were so expensive it took someone to come make one that cheap to make it work Fair enough, you get what you pay for, as they say, but if you order it from China, it probably be worse off. This is being built with by quality parts. You can hear the fans are running, keeping it stable. And now, as you see on this, the P right here, it's now gonna ask for partial for complete programming. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just complete, exclude the components. So we don't want the infotainment and that lot, because obviously it's gonna cause more of a headache. We're just gonna let that run. It's the voltage stabilizers on. Icom's all running, as you can see right there. I don't know if you can see it on the window, it's sitting right there. I've got it all linked up. And guys, that's another thing. Make sure you've got an ICOM. Like I said to you, the software, the ICOM, and the voltage stabilizer all together is going to cost you around over a thousand pounds in the US. But like I said, if you want to do it properly, this is your only choice. You can't do it the way you guys think you can do it where you can go and buy a battery charger. Battery charger is not going to handle any kind of programming. Like I said, if you guys don't believe me, let me come in, let me just program one of your fuel pump modules and let me just trigger it for a second and you quickly watch how quick that battery will drain as soon as it comes on. Where with this, I can guarantee I can trigger the, a fuel pump on it with a voltage stabilizer on and it doesn't even lose power. I'm telling you the truth. Don't use a battery charger. Battery charger is no good. Same as a cable. Don't try and use a cable. I mean, people making Insta P emulators that can manipulate the voltage. Don't do it. Trust me, don't do it. Because the car is, you can try and manipulate the voltage of the programming, but the car's voltage is, will tell you different. If the car detects different, you'll be in big, big trouble. And that will be it will shut down the whole car and then you, it will come at high battery discharge and you'll be left with a programming ball you don't want that okay guys so as you can see here now we've got all the calculate measure plans and as you can see it's now stopped doing this thing 
So now we're going to go into the control module tray and you're going to see here all the modules. Now all the modules there are showing not available now but that's because none of them need an update because I've updated them. Now if we go process control modules you'll see all the modules here that can be programmed in code. Now what you're going to do here is if I select on one module to show you how to use export mode. So if you click on this module for instance and I didn't want to code it. So you go to immediate measures you just click hide all actions. Now what that's going to do is that's going to stop it programming that module and it hides it from Mr. P. So then that way you can carry on more programming modules but hide that one. So that's all you have to go to to get away of programming certain modules that you don't. So if you don't want to program certain modules now as you can see that's done. Now as you can see here the red has gone from it. So that's how you use it's the P and export mode to get away from modules. Now I'm going to do that again say for the PDC for instance. Now as you can see what's the program and code. Now what I'm going to do again is go immediate measures, hide all actions. Now as you'll see here, it's now took it off. Now that's all you need to do when you don't want to program a certain module. Now if you wanted to program all the modules, you just go to determine measure plans and it will program the modules that you've selected. Now as you can see in that um, action list, it's asking me to reprogram all this because it wants me to initialize the front power window regulator and that's because the anti-track feature had a problem the other day. And that's the only reason asking me to do that. Now I will reprogram that using WinKFP. I'm not going to use this to reprogram the SJM and the ZGM. There's no point. But as you can see here, that's how you'd use expert mode to program certain modules. Now, if you just want to program the whole lot, it will come up and then you can click remove the measures if you really wanted to and remove all the measures that you've just put in and reprogram the whole car. But if I was you, I would hide all this, as you can see here, all the most connection because you don't want to program for the most and just do all this the PT can, which is dynamic stability control, EGS, which is the gearbox, EKP, the fuel pump, DME, which is the actual electronic ECU of the car and the SDL, the steering lock. They're all the ones that control the drivability of the car and they're the ones you're going to get the gain from. You ain't going to get no gain from the castle and doing any of these, so there's no point changing any of them. And like I tell everyone, no point doing the whole iDrive system because you're going to get no gain. It ain't going to change your Bluetooth. You're going to get no gain on your iDrive. You're going to get no gain from anything else. So there's no point changing any of that. If you guys are really going to change that, update, you're running the risk of bricking everything. You, there's no need to risk doing that. The next thing is in maintenance. Now as you'll see in maintenance when it loads up, if we do display complete, Usually that will show when everything's ever, anything's ever been done on the car. Now, if we was working in the dealer and we had access to their system, it would show it, but because we're not working in the dealer, we don't have access to that. So that's what maintenance is for. Vehicle, now as you can see, this is if you're gonna do conversions for the car. Now, as you can see with the conversions, if you go into vehicle, conversions, you can do conversion, deactivate driver's seatbelt reminder. Now, I've already done that with NCS Expert, so you don't need to really use ISTP. Now, this is the other reason why a lot of people use NCS Expert, because on ISTP, you need a voltage stabilizer to be able to get into it, and then it takes a long time to code that out, do this, do that, what it needs to do, where with NCS Expert, it's just straight away and done. Now, another one is conversion deactivate front passenger seat, but that's another one the same, conversion lights to a model facelift. Now, that's what you can do as well, is convert them to the facelift model of the, of the front lights. It's not hard to do, but it'll program it and code it for you, if you was able to do that. The same for the opening of the luggage compartment lid without unlocking possible. You can do that. Set automatic headlamp control to normal. Set automatic headlamp control to very sensitive. It's all different things you can do. And retrofit pivoted trailer tow hitch, headlamp washer system, front passenger's airbag de deactivation. You can do that as well. Obviously, if you've got a baby and you want to put the baby in the front, that's what you do. The same things for here. Conversions coding only. So you go into here and you can retrofit a certain battery and an EVAP temp sensor. Conversion of oil maintenance, you can change the oil maintenance schedule, so it's not always asking you to do it at this time or that time, or if you don't want to reset it, just change it to 24 months. You can do a lot of different things in here, but if you do want it to come in now, as you can see here, these are the follow-up routines. Now, as you can see, a lot of people can do this through ISTA D, so you don't really do or ISTA Plus, as I call it, so you don't really have to do this. But if you wanted to, you can come in and do the adjustment of the steering angle sensor, calibrate the steering column, the cast calibration, that's the calibrate, it calibrates the cast with the DME, as you guys know. Clear the fault code memory. So also when it programs and codes, as you guys know, it leaves a lot of fault codes in the car from losing communication. This clears the faults as well, so you never get no faults off. You can also deactivate the compressor running protection. Again, you can do that with Vista D. Initialization of the RDC warning. Again, who wants that on their car? Initializing front power window regulator, initializing the rear power window regulator. So again, you can do all the things in here on the follow-up routine if you really wanted to. Immediate actions are clear fault code memory, write down system time and date. So you can write down a system time and date as you know the CCC needs that to register with the battery and everything else on the car. The CKM is everything to do, you can do coding in everything. So as you can see here, this is all the coding functions. From factory on your key, so basically you can check the central locking, one touch function, open driver's window. As you see, mine's all enabled. There's not really much to disable on mine unless it's convertible. 
but as you can see the daytime running lamps I have them off I wouldn't have them on at all as you'll see here the recirculated air setting is not active flap set points value correction are not active because there's no need M memory I've got not active AC auto with auto not active as well now as you see the fan correction I've turned it off as well because it just annoys the hell out of me now as you can see there's a lot you can do here now I've got the interior sensor activated you can turn it all off this is a little bit of coding options as I say it's the P doesn't have any coding options not that NCS expert but if you was going to use it's the P this is your coding options that you've got on this program as I'll say as well on your vehicle actions now you can do import vehicle order now if that's if you want to rewrite the VO now you don't want to be doing that because if you took anything out of the VO it will rewrite everything in your VO now a lot of it is when you do conversions coding only say if you want to do a retrofit this or you want to convert that to that that's when you're going to import the VO as well but if you import the VO and it's, it knows it's missing something for instance I've got the run flat indicator off on mine and certain other little niggly bits like I've got the M Sport hood coded in and things like that if you do that it's going to import your whole VO again and you'll have to do it all over again so you don't want to be doing that now the programming stage is very like I said to you is very simple when you go back to control module tree you can select certain modules that you want to program and that you don't want to program so for instance this is asking me to program so now I'm just going to show you now I'm going to hide that action because I ain't going to be programming nothing on the car even though I could but I won't because I have no need and just to remind you guys you can see the state voltage up there from the voltage stabilizer still keeping stable and that's what it was when we started it hasn't dropped and this is what I mean by using a voltage stabilizer it keeps it stable a battery charger wouldn't even be able to howl or the diagnostics running through the port but this can now as you can see that one's been hidden now as you can see if you wanted to for instance I could do this but this one you don't need an update that's why it's not asking the program it's fully up to date my DME it's on my latest firm which is 7581238 so it's all on the latest firm if it wasn't it will be telling me it ain't and it will be asking me to update there's not really much to SDP you've just got to remember how to program in expert mode expert mode is usually activated on everyone's software that I do it for so everyone's got it as I'm just telling you straight don't try using an ENET cable or a DCAN cable I've told you this before I'll tell you it again no battery charger no decan cable no voltage emulator because trust me you can trick the programming into thinking your voltage is fine but you will not be able to trick the car into thinking it's fine because it doesn't trick the car all that does is going to kill your car because when the car's battery is low it's just going to shut down regardless of what that emulator is telling that program the car will shut down and when it shuts down it's going to leave your programs all your all your modules in programming the bolt and then you will be screwed because that is a very big headache to get back running and properly. And then you'll need an ICOM if you've got a GM gearbox, as you guys probably know, or if you don't know, I'm gonna tell you now, if you've got a GM gearbox, you cannot flash that of a cable. It cannot write the program file and the calibration file ends up bricking the module. Just be aware of that, that's another thing. Um, I'm just explaining to all the guys all the all the causes and how to use this to be properly if you want to use it properly as I told you in the beginning get yourself a proper icon get yourself a voltage stabilizer yes it's expensive you guys always say to me oh it's expensive it is expensive to do this it costs me a lot of money to do this but if you want to do it right you have to do it professionally and you have to do it right the first time you don't want to be going around bricking people's modules and say if you've got a friend and you they want to do the program you could program for them easily with no worries not thinking oh my god is it going to brick this is it going to brick that if the power goes down then you're just sitting there worrying this is a very nerve-wracking thing to be doing and when you're not a dealer and you probably don't have money to replace someone's whole car and replace all their modules or you don't have to bench flash or um, redo the modules on a bench to clone or do anything trust me it's better to be safer than sorry because if you guys don't know how to do that and you just want to play about it and sh show off to people you're going to end up doing serious damage to your friend's car that's why i recommend getting a voltage stabilizer then you can show off to them because you ain't got no risk of it bricking it can still brick if you don't do it right but it, the risk is less likely to, as i said to you just make sure your icon's fully up to date make sure your program's fully up to date make sure you've got a voltage stabilizer and everything will run perfect so guys the next thing i'm going to speak to you about on this to p is that if you've got a module that needs replacing all you're going to want to do the same thing if it shows you here that it's in the red and it's telling you it needs replacing and it can't program and it keeps coming up in measure plans just do the same thing so you go into that and then obviously i can't do it on here but you'll just go into the immediate measures and hide the actions for instance like here the hood so it's not asking me for anything because everything's up to date on my car but as i'm telling you guys if it's up there you just want to go and hide the actions as you saw me do and it hides it and then what you do is go to determine measure plans and you can remove the measures as well now you don't want to usually remove the measures because if you remove the measures then it's going to remove everything and not that you program you just want to do the term measures and it keeps that away and then when it asks you if you've replaced the module just click yes and that's it it should go through and let you program i've done it many times and it's let me as i showed you this is it's the p guys um i've been needing to do this video as i've done it on the it's the plus it's the d and i've done it on the impa wing kfp and ncs expert so i've needed to do it on this many of you who have got the software already um and have got a decan cable let me tell you straight away don't attempt trying to use this with your decan cable it won't work even if your car's battery voltage is fine 
the programming coding and trying to use it, SDP takes a very long time. And via cable, you end up bricking your whole modules. Do not, and take my word for this, because you can go back on this video when you've done it and you've messed up your modules. Do not try and use ISTP to program and code your modules. It's very fancy, yes, it clears your memory, it saves you having to do everything. Where usually when you flash with WinkFP and then recode with NCS Expert and then have to go clear the codes Vista, that's a long way around it, yes, but one, you can do it with cable. Two, it's a lot better with doing it like that. It's the P, you need to have an ICOM. You go do that with a cable, it's not gonna pull enough power. You're not gonna have the right cable to do it. It's gonna end up bricking your module. It takes a very long time for ISTP and you've got to have the right stuff to do it. Trust me, guys, I'm telling you this because I um, care about your cars and I don't want you to go and brick your cars. If you want your car to stay with you, trust me when I'm telling you, do it properly the first time. Don't use a DCAN cable. And trust me, any of you guys, like I told you, have a DCAN cable, don't even think of opening this application. It's there you can use it with a DCAN cable, yes, but I strongly advise not to. And if you do do it, you'll then find out why I told you not to do it when you come back to me saying to me you bricked your car. I'm just advising you, this is just my advice. That's my personal experience and that's my experience on telling you not to do it. I've got all the proper tools, yes. You guys are now gonna probably ask me, oh, where did I get my voltage stabilizer? The guy doesn't have any more, so I can't even put his link up. Um, he said to me he'll let me know if he does get them, but he doesn't think he's gonna be doing them anymore. He's moved back over to England now from his country. Um, and I think he's gonna let me know when he's got more in. As I say, I've got one for me and one for Nathan, um, but that's about it. Me and Nathan have got one, as you guys have been seeing, Nathan's been using a battery charger. I couldn't let him keep using that, so I ordered Nathan another one. But for the majority of you guys, you guys are just gonna have to wait patiently until I can get it. These are cheap and he does ship to the US as well. He ships globally. So like I said to you in the US, it's about $130 for this. And as you see, it's perfectly working. And it's still, as you see, the voltage is still staying at 13.5 volts. It still hasn't dropped, as you see, it's staying stable. Completely, it does not move. Now that just shows you how good of a voltage stabilizer it is. It's been configured properly, as you see here. The leads are on. As you see, the only problem is that leads have got gaffer tape on them, but you're gonna expect that. If you want an original, what proper one, you're gonna end up paying 250, 300 pound. Like I said to you, this is a cheap alternative and it works. So like I said to you, it took a long time since BMW released this for someone to actually figure out how to design one of these, but they have. And I'm very happy with the guy. Like I said, there's not nobody else doing this. Nobody else, and I mean that when I say that, as I've searched high and low for these. Um, and this guy, like I said, I'll speak to him now. We uh, speak all the time, same as me and Nathan. And he does the same thing as me with the F-Series. He's even told me if I get F-Series cars, he's gonna send me a lot of retrofit kits to advertise on my YouTube channel for me. Um, and gonna help me so I can show people how to do it. And he's gonna send me the kits, obviously, just for my channel. So I can help you guys show you how to retrofit the paddle shift um, steer them on the F-Series and everything and code it all in because via E-System. Obviously guys, this is the ISTP video right here. This is me now going to be complete with this video. There's not much to really show you on ISTP. As you all know, if you're going to be using a most network, just make sure you use the most adapter, which is right here. Just make sure you're going to use that if you're going to use a, um, if you need to do anything on the most network, which I have as well. As you know, it just plugs into the ICOM and from the ICOM it goes from there. Don't try and use anything else. You need the most adapter and that's it guys. So I hope you've liked this video guys. Thank you very much for watching. This is BMW Dr. Dean here. If you have enjoyed it and it has helped you now, please give it a thumbs up. Please, if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe. As I say on all my videos, this takes a long time for me to uh, make, edit as well and upload. As you guys know, YouTube isn't easy. I'm just trying my best to help you guys out. Um, I've taught a lot of people how to use Mr. D now. I've taught a lot of people how to use Dr. Genie, WinkFP, NCS Expert, and my videos are doing really well. Um, all I want from it is obviously just a thumbs up and obviously subscribe if you feel like it and obviously you want to see more great content. I have got eSystem coming up in the process for a full walkthrough on that, probably as long as this. And I also have got other software as well showing you how to code in different maps and lifetime maps with the FSC on the MBVTs on the F-Series as well. Thanks for watching guys, it's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye. <laughs>